Hello and thank you for joining. Today's tutorial is going to be the Excel 2013 tutorial number 19 and what I'm going to do today is give you a quick overview on macros and introduction and how to create a macro and I'm going to do a absolute macro example and a relative reference macro example. I wanted to quickly point out my website is listed here and here's some other links that may be of interest to you. So one quick note about macros and the reason why you would use macros. I'm going to do some very simple examples here, but a macro can help you record a sequence of events, a sequence of commands, a sequence of, a sequence of settings in order to avoid doing repetitive tasks. So it can be very helpful and it can get very advanced and this is just an introduction to them. So what you want to do to record a macro, you're going to go to your developer tab and by the way if you do not have a developer tab you're going to go under file and this is for Excel 2013 by the way you're going to go to options and then you're going to go down to the section called customize ribbon and you're going to check the little developer box here on the right once you do that you click OK and you will now have a developer tab now I'm going to go over here and I am going to go into record macro so I'm going to click record macro and I'm going to call it absolute macro and I can create a shortcut for it I'll, I'll do uh, I'll do control lowercase a and then you can store the macro you can do it a couple of different ways you can do it just in this workbook here or you can do it in a new workbook or you can um, create something called a personal macro workbook where you keep them if you do create this it creates a file that's always there and um, if it bothers you, you have to go in and delete it, and it's a hidden file. So there's a series of steps you have to go through to delete it. So for this example, I'm just going to leave it at, at this workbook. I'm going to say OK. And now what I'm going to do, I'm just going to go ahead and make uh, a couple of line entries over here. So I'm going to go ahead and click my cell A1. It's important to click the cell um, so you get the first cell set in your example, in your macro. So I'm going to go ahead and just do name address and phone number as an example and then I'm going to highlight them and I am going to go back to my home tab I am going to bold and italicize those okay and now I might change the font color to I don't know I'll make it red so now I'm going to go back to the developer tab I'm going to go ahead, I can click stop recording here or I can go down here to the very bottom and you see there's a stop, a little square here to stop recording. This is handy when you're changing menus and screens so that you don't have to go back into the developer tab. So I'm going to go ahead and click stop recording. And this is a very simple example. But now I'm going to go ahead and open up sheet number two and I'm going to put my cursor over here on F5. What we recorded was an absolute macro so when I go in here I can run my macro I can do control a or I can go back into developer and go into macros and I can click r highlight the macro that I want to run and click run you see what happens it puts it back in cells a1 through a3 the absolute macro always references the absolute um, values so it doesn't matter where it's at it's going to put it in the same spot so I can put my cursor over here it would paste it over here in A1 through 3. So, um, one thing you can do if you need more flexibility and you might not want your macro to always be in these three cells is you can create a relative reference macro and how that works, let me go ahead and delete this out of here. Okay, so what I'm going to do here is I'm going to create a relative reference this time and show you how that can help you with flexibility in reporting and using macros. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to go ahead and click the Use Relative Reference option here. And you see it highlights it when I do that. Okay, so now that I've clicked Use Relative Reference, now I'm going to record a macro. So when I, I'm going to click Record Macro. And I am going to call this Relative Reference. And I'm going to do Control Shift. Or control uppercase A and it adds the control shift there. I'm going to say OK. And now I am recording. So now what I want to do, I want to leave a gap here of one cell or one row. Um, I'm going to calculate the totals, sales totals here, and the sales totals and the commission totals here. 
and I'm going to show you in a minute why I'm going to leave a, a space between the last piece of data and the total. So I'm going to say equals sum, open parentheses, and I'm going to click here on cell B2. And then I could just drag it down there and go to B7 and it would record the macro um, fine in this case. However, what I want to do, I'm going to hit shift colon and then instead of dragging the mouse down and going to B7, I'm going to hit the control key and I'm going to hit the down arrow. And you see what happens, it brings me to the last row of contiguous data, in this case cell B7. I close my parentheses and now I want to reference I always know sales start at B2, but I don't know where they're going to end because we can add or remove salespeople. So now I'm going to go in here and I'm going to highlight cell B2 in the formula. I'm going to hit F4, and again, that makes that a constant reference. So it always for this formula always starts at B2. I'm going to go over here. I'm going to do the same exact thing for the total commission. So I'm going to click there, colon. I'm going to hold down the control key, hit the down arrow close the parentheses and again I'm going to go here and make C2 a constant reference highlight it in the formula hit F4 and you see with the dollar symbols that's what it does you can man manually type those in too obviously um, but F4 will do that for you so you can see 2847 total sales two hundred and eighty four dollars and seventy cents in commissions and that's because ten percent commission rate in this simple example so now what I can do, I want to stop the recording. Well, I might want to do this also. I might want to take these cells here, go to the Home tab, and I'm going to go ahead and let's do, let's make these red. And let's also go in here and format cells. Change them to currency, two decimal places. So, and then we can also make them bold. Okay, so now I'm going to stop recording using the button down here, or you could go up here to developer and say stop recording. I'll click this one down here. So now my macro is recorded. It's called relative reference. So now what I can do here is let's assume that Jane has left the company. And I'm going to go ahead and delete Jane's row, and now um, this is a new week, so sales are a little bit different. And now what I want to do is I want to run my totals. I want to run my new totals, so I'm going to go ahead and uh, use my macro. So what I do, I go into macros. And again, I can use the shortcut key, but I'm just going to go in here and click Run. And now you can see what happened. It totaled the numbers now, 310. And the reason why it did that is now you can see it used the relative reference of B2. It constantly referenced B2, but then it stopped at B6 this time. So I could go over here, you know, I could add five salespeople, this would go down to B11 or whatever the appropriate row is, and that's how you use a relative reference and gives you the flexibility of not being locked in on a certain, certain range of values. And the final thing I wanted to share with you here is you can go into macros, and you can go in here and click edit, and you can actually see the commands. So in here, what did I do? This was the absolute macro. I went to cell A1, I selected it and I typed in name. I went to cell A2, I typed in address. Then I selected the fonts and so forth. Um, and then the relative reference, you can see down here, what I did is I went to um, you know, my active cell and then it gives me all the formulas and, and it takes care of that for you. So anyways, that's what I want to share with you. Thanks for joining in. Please subscribe. Take care.